Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We are gonna be talking about mini cuts again today. I know this is the third vlog in a succession of vlogs on mini cuts, but I think this one's gonna be really a great way to kind of finish off that series in terms of I kind of took you through my nutrition, I took you through my training, kind of why they're set up that particular way. And now we're kind of gonna do a roundup and you're gonna see my personal results. I apologize in advance if you can hear some building work outside. It's pretty noisy, but hopefully this uh, directional mic isn't picking it up too heavily. So first of all, I wanted to kind of give you where I started. So I started at a peak mass of 195 pounds. So that was kind of the heaviest I'd got to in that kind of mass macro cycle as it were. And that's where like appetite started becoming a real problem. So I was pushing 4,000 calories. My steps were at 14.5K. So you have an understanding of where that was at. Training six days a week. And I wasn't doing twice daily training or anything like that. It was all just a single session. So then I moved into my mini cut because my appetite was so bad. And that's one of the reasons to do a mini cut is to kind of reignite an appetite when you're just so past the feeling of feeling full and nauseous. And so I needed it to kind of reignite that. So I, I moved straight down to 2,400 calories. So a big drop in calories, over, like over 1,500 calorie drop. You'd be like, isn't that horrendously huge, Steve? It's like, well, when you consider I was on 4,000 calories and that was a surplus, my maintenance was considerably below that, maybe 3,700 or so would be a maintenance and I was struggling to eat that at one period of time so then I dropped a thousand from there that would be 2700 but then you consider all the adaptations that take place so the metabolic adaptations uh, my resting heart rate quickly dropped from 55 plus beats to uh, 50 beats per minute so I'm already just resting and burning a fewer calories and then just all the compensations that you have um, that also go on I thought that's an absolute reasonable place to start and also I was initially struggling to consume that many calories anyway but on average for the entire mini cut I was consuming 2,400 calories I didn't change them throughout the entire mini cut I generally find you don't need to I was on 220 grams of protein so plenty of protein there for considering my body weight 270 grams of carbs and 50 grams of fat my fat was maybe towards slightly lower than ideal some people might argue I like 0.3 grams per pound but it was honestly driven by preference and also knowing that the mini cut is such a short period of time I wasn't too concerned about it and if I saw any kind of uh, negative consequences of going that low in fat then of course I would have bumped them up but it was just a case of transitioning I was so used to being low fat high carb during my mass where I was having like I don't know 60 grams of fat during my mass 70 grams and like 500 grams plus of carbohydrates it kind of transitioned quite smoothly to be that way so did I say my step count was also an average of 16,000 so that actually increased as well so I was a 14.5k average steps uh, moved up to 16,000 average steps and that was really because my day-to-day -day living didn't change it was just on the weekends I did go out of my way to get extra steps in it was also beautiful weather um, very hot weather as well so it was nice to just get outside and be outside for a lot of the day so that kind of just happened uh, naturally and if my rate of loss or my performance had dropped in the gym, sure, I wouldn't be many, making some adjustments, maybe increase my calorie intake, but I just didn't see that as necessary. So from week one, sorry, from, yeah, through week one, I dropped uh, to down an average of 192 pounds. And I noted that actually hunger had already picked back up from feeling nauseous and sick. It had already picked back up to having some hunger towards the end of week one. That's how quickly your body can make these sort of adjustments and changes in terms of hunger and appetite. So it's also a great learning lesson of if it is an appetite thing and it's nothing else, maybe you can get away with like a couple of weeks of mini cutting just to pick that appetite back up. But maybe the more time you stay in that deficit, the more it picks up. And that was certainly the case by the end of week three, it was in a really good place where I was looking forward to each meal. I was actually getting hungry between meals, which was definitely novel to me. So. Peak mass 195, I went to 192, so saw a big lot of bloat drop off and things like this. I call it mass bloat, or like you can call it like glycogen dropping off, and for every gram of glycogen, there's three to four grams of water stored. So you see a big water drop off as well. So then week two, uh, from week one to week two, 188 pounds, so a big drop from week one to week two as well. But then it really slowed down, so I went from week one, sorry, Week two to week three, only dropped a pound, 187 pounds. And then week three to week four, I then went down to 184 pounds. As, and that was my actual lowest weigh-in was 184 pounds. My actually weekly average was like 185, 186. So you can see I kind of saw like a really quick drop off at the start and then it really steadied out. But I think it's people get tempted to make too many changes during a mini cut. During a normal cut, sure. 
for extended periods of time, you're going to see kind of big ad adaptations take place. I mentioned a few, but the adaptations you're seeing in a mini cut, because it's so short, they're not going to be huge, like metabolic adaptations. The body isn't going to downregulate on so many fronts during a mini cut. So you don't really need, if you've made an assertive calorie deficit from the start, and you've kind of done the math in terms of thermodynamics and where you've been before and where your maintenance pretty much is, you won't need to make any changes. You're in an aggressive deficit. The only reason I think to make changes really is if it's too easy or like, and you could cut harder or if, and you didn't set that up particularly aggressively or if you've gone too aggressive and you need to pull back because adherence is kind of falling off or maybe training performances as well. So essentially from start to end, I dropped about 10 pounds uh, within four weeks. And actually it was a bit less than four weeks because I ended pretty much on the Friday of that final week where me and Charlotte went to Margate for the weekend. And I basically was just like kind of eating ab lib. I was just being mindful. I was probably in a small deficit over those days. Now I've had a few days at uh, kind of maintenance and deloading and that was new predicted maintenance. So I brought calories straight up to 3,400 to be around predicted maintenance, uh, which obviously dropped somewhat, about 10% down from where it was before. And that was just because those adaptations have taken place. It's probably not dropped that aggressively. Uh, and I've moved now from yesterday into a surplus. So I've moved out to 3,700, which is my previous predicted maintenance. And I'm sure I'm gonna have to ramp that up quickly, probably close to 4,000 in no time again. But you realize, that your maintenance will change, your body adapts. Um, so there's gonna be these adaptions as you kind of adapt downwards as you're cutting, and then as you start massing, the body adapts upwards again. And I find I'm quick to adapt both ways. So if I immediately went back to 4,000 calories or 3,700 for maintenance and then 4,000, I'd be in too big of a surplus those times and I just it would be unnecessary. So I know whilst my maintenance is a bit suppressed now, it will quickly adapt back up as I come out. You just have to know yourself. Some people aren't that quick to adapt and you learn this through data collection and body weight collection and taking averages and monitoring your calories. And it's just invaluable to have the history and, and data. And it, it can just allow for a lot of less concerns about some of these fluctuations or stalls and those sort of things. So I wanted to talk through some of the things I immediately noticed or noticed during this period of time. So digestion improved uh, tremendously. I wasn't on the toilet all day <laughs> and uh, that's already picked back up to be honest. I'm going that way more, which is frustrating, but it is what it is. But I noticed my appetite was way improved. Um, well-being generally massively improved. Probably a large part of that is like psychological in terms of not having the burden of having to force feed and the stress of that. Um, but I, in terms of well-being, my sleep was better. Um, my stress day-to-day -day was lower and my focus was better in terms of work and productivity in that regard. And I noticed physically that my face, uh, I don't know if you guys saw it and you might see it when you see the kind of comparison um, physique updates that I'm running in the background, uh, my face got much slimmer and my waist got much slimmer. And it was really, really great for me to see that my waistline came in a lot because that's one of the, my weakest areas as a bodybuilder is that I don't have a great V taper. I don't have a great X frame because I have a large waist, I have big hips. So the fact that that came in really big, uh, big, real big, uh, came in a lot was really nice to see because it just gave me a lot of confidence that like, yeah, when I start dialing back down and uh, start revealing the muscle I've gained, like my X frame has improved I already think this is a better physique than I've ever seen before. This is the best, like 185 pounds that I've ever had on me. So I'm I'm really pleased about that. And actually, it's probably looking even better now. I've had well, a day in a surplus, although I did hit like I was under 185 pounds today. So it's just one of those weird things, you know, with scale weight where you think, oh, you're now eating way more. You're in a surplus. Your weight should just jump up. But there's a bunch of water weight changes that fluctuate and go on, um, which I'm going to talk about as well. I'm going to talk about a few FAQs that we get frequently asked questions about mini cuts. So during this period of time, so I mentioned kind of the physical changes uh, and like psychological changes there. I saw no strength loss during this period of time. So I didn't lose any strength across the weeks. I kind of just looked to hit week one performance and then kind of maintain that or beat it by a tiny amount versus in a mass where I'd be way more assertive about things because I just have way more recoverability and my, my performances can be way better. And, and training was fine. Uh, obviously, I have that whole other uh, vlog on training if you want to check it out. And so then, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it in terms of kind of the wrap up for the mini cut. Uh, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. I, I would have probably only ran it for three weeks had it not made sense to run it for four weeks due to lifestyle circumstances and deadlines and life events that are going on. 
um but i really like mini cuts ran on average for like four weeks is a real sweet spot i think three is about the minimum i like with six being the maximum i find doing longer or shorter than that just to be a little bit unproductive at the moment though because my experience may change with this sort of thing but Anyway, let's go over some of the frequently asked questions. So risk of muscle loss. People are worried about losing muscle because of the aggressive nature of the mini cut. And what I'd say is if you've got sufficient training volume, which should be set at like your baseline kind of mass training volumes and kind of set there and left because you haven't got the recoverability to push more. And I'm talking about set volume. So if you're hitting those baseline levels of volume, you're doing enough to maintain muscle. And how do you really know if you're maintaining performance you can be pretty certain you're maintaining muscle mass. So that's one key reason you shouldn't lose muscle because you have your training set up intelligently. And then secondly, you have sufficient protein, um, probably pushing your protein up to like 1.2 grams per pound maybe or per lean body mass. So you can see that mine was above one gram per pound. And that is just to bolster muscle protein synthesis even more, um, which has in research shown to help protect muscle uh, even more so too. So if you've got your protein in an appropriate place, you've got your training in an appropriate place, you're taking care, you're taking care of stressors, sleep, those sort of factors, shouldn't be risk of muscle loss. And also obviously losing an appropriate pace, not losing like 2% plus per week every week like that would just be too aggressive you'd start seeing performance losses so that should protect all muscle you shouldn't be losing muscle um, then people ask kind of what to do after the mini cut like I said normally you'll want to deload you might not need a full week of deloading I took four or five days uh, to deload and then I've come in to things um, if you've ran it four weeks plus you probably want more close to a week if you've ran four weeks or less you might get away with a bit less than a week deload um, but do what kind of suits you and your preferences to deloading for a bit more time is no issue when you come to deload also bring calories to maintenance but new predicted maintenance and then after that into massing typically so then you push calories up maybe 300 calories above your maintenance level that's a good starting point for a lot of people and then in terms of dealing with water weight changes just know to ignore a week or two transitioning into any phase i have this two week ignore rule where basically if you're transitioning into any other phase like massing to cutting cutting to massing whatever it might be massing to maintenance maintenance to cutting whatever it might be ignore the first couple of weeks because there's all these fluid changes that are going on so i wouldn't be too concerned about worrying about those and just kind of set your numbers based off the history of tracking your calories and uh, your body weight and know that you're in a good position where you are and you can't be 100 percent accurate so don't worry about it all of these things land on ranges anyway even maintenance is somewhat of a range you could maintain on a bit higher or a bit lower so i wouldn't be overly stressed about those sort of things needing to be perfect so then uh, i kind of went over less than two weeks or more than six i think more than six it starts to become just a, a general cut phase anyway so if you needed more than six weeks a mini cut isn't enough it's not mini anymore it's kind of like a normal cut maybe like a 10 week cut is what you needed and then so you might want to design that slightly differently because you can't you probably don't want to be as aggressive for the whole 10 weeks and then less than two it's like did you really need a mini cut now i think like i said three to four four weeks being like a, a real sweet spot for a lot of people but um it can be different so then how long to use uh, a bulk before having a mini cut? I would say absolute minimum two mesocycles worth. So for most people, that's going to be 10 to like 15 weeks or so of massing because you need to have earned the, the right to mini cut, right? Um, so yeah, you have to have at least massed for like multiple times the length of what the mini cut you're going to look to run uh, and then in terms of how frequently used i think one to two per mass macro cycle so say a mass macro cycle is like three to four mesocycles worth like multiple months you only want to have like one to two in that like uh, and actually did i say one to two maybe one in that sort of time frame so for me as an example like post show i ran i can't remember how long it's been now like over six months since post show and so then i've run a mini cut now obviously there was a recovery phase and then there's off season so maybe that's like four or five months and then run a mini cut and then i'm going to go for like probably another three or four months and then maybe run a mini cut and then i'll go for more massing and then maybe it's a maintenance before like a long cut that i'll eventually need but every time i mini cut i come down but every time i mass after it, i want to come to like a new peak high body weight so when you really zoom out you're linearly linearly gaining you don't want to be like 
I'm mini cutting, sorry, gaining, mini cutting down, gaining, mini cutting down. And so if you zoom out, it looks like maintenance long term. I don't think that's the best way to do it. I think that's just people trying to stay too lean. I do like people to kind of slowly creep their body weight up. And that's per why I did it. Because I'm like, right, 195 pounds was my peak. Now, if I want to push to 200, this is the next run. Hopefully I can get up to that sort of weight this time around. We'll see. I'll auto regulate it and see. So I think less is more with mini cuts because whilst they can propel massing phases, if you do use them too frequently, they can really start start hurting you and actually hold you back. And I've certainly been on the edge of doing that too much. I think my last off season, I used them a little bit more than I needed to. And that comes down to it. Use them when you need it, not just when you feel like it. So that really wraps up the mini cut. Uh, my experience, some FAQ. Obviously, I've gone over training, nutrition in previous mini cut uh, vlogs. So definitely check those out. And as a side note, if you've got a lot from this, if you think you'd like to run a mini cut, but you're a bit still unsure about it, or you'd like some uh, accountability, you'd like to be in a group, we have our mini cut movement, which is now something you can join at any time. So whenever you're thinking, oh, I want to start a mini cut in a week's time, you can sign up, you can join our mini cut course, we'll run you through that. You have your training nutrition spreadsheets, it's all auto regulated for you as well. In terms of the training, we have three, four, five, six, I believe, oh no, not three, four, five, six day per week splits. I think most people three days a week isn't quite enough for them who are watching or they don't want to train that little anyway so we have those all covered for you male and female splits so you know you'll be maintaining muscle with that setup and then you have your nutrition as well which the spreadsheet has calculations in there to make sure you're losing an appropriate pace and it will make changes if it needs to uh, if it's easy you're not losing fast enough or if you're losing too fast it will suggest changes to you as well and then if all else fails we have a facebook group that you can join and ask the experts questions including myself pascal and the team and then uh, we also have video educational kind of lectures each week i call them lectures like little mini videos kind of just talking you through the process keep you accountable and walking you through the mini cuts you can make the most out of it so you should be losing fat super efficiently super fast um, and effectively setting you up for again more gaining or whatever you want to come out of it so yeah definitely sign up to the mini cut movement if you're interested in that again you get your spreadsheet you get everything it might you'll hopefully learn a ton and you'll be part of kind of a nice like-minded group of individuals uh, so that'll be linked in the bio in the description even not in my bio and uh, guys i'll leave it there really uh, if you do join it drop a comment let me know and I'm excited to see you in there. Otherwise, yeah, I'm excited to get back into massing and uh, sharing more of my journey. So cheers, guys. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.